Was that a jump scare during the f***ing logos? What kind of sadistic game are you playing, movie? Andrew! Oh, so this is one of those movies, huh? A movie that requires a cut in the middle of someone yelling a two-syllable name. The movie uses footage of people from Nashville after their football team goes 8-8 eight and eight for yet another season. I was looking at recipes for toast. Way to go, Mom! Caught her in a lie! But she was cooking eggs, too. Sometimes those have recipes. But also, I don't know why Stranger Things is lying so horribly. Why not just say you were looking at emails? Or Chrissy Teigen's Twitter. I just don't want to see you get hurt. I don't know. Especially with everything that's Mom? going on right now. I know. Goddamn, there's so much ham-handed manufactured family discord bull in this movie that I'm positive they brought Roland Emmerich back into the franchise. Outside of the writer's room for this movie, an intern passed by the open door and said, man, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when they try and explain the birth of Mothra. High on Mountain Dew, flaming Hot Cheetos, and donut-flavored vape juice, the writers somehow decided to literally include it into the script. Damn, this new Spider-Man movie is f***ing dark! <laughs> I guess they were going for some 3D sight scares here, but to me it just looks like what me and my crew did to the camera during our last orgy movie. Warren's iPhone XR was never really the same afterwards. Son of a bitch, it worked. And she's so positive this tech has worked on this brand new monster that she's gonna encourage her only child to reach out and touch that motherfucker on the snout, or whatever passes as a snout in Mothland. Also, anybody gonna check on those guards who got shot with all that Mothra silk a minute ago? No, you're right, they're probably dead. Go ahead and pet the monster. Must find ways to coexist with titans. A sort of symbiotic relationship, if you will. Jesus, what is up with Sally Hawkins getting familiar with strange, fantastical creatures? If she hops into the shower with Rodan later in this movie, I'm going to officially be worried for her long-term safety. So you'd want to make Godzilla our pet? No, we would be his. This is one of those lines that sounds good until you realize that Godzilla wouldn't have us as pets either. Godzilla's kind of a loner, doesn't need any special companionship. He wouldn't be responsible for feeding us. We'd be able to move from San Francisco to a small town in Minnesota and he wouldn't put up lost human posters. Godzilla would be a shitty pet owner. How come every one of these movies has some asshole who's estranged from his family living in some remote area and is the only person who can do this? The feed cuts out there. The survivors haven't been able to give us much more than what the footage allows. The, excuse me, what, survivors? What survivors? When Tywin Lannister came in with his crew, they shot everybody, including downright making an example of this guy. The other people in the facility got splooged with moth silk. She believed that if we could somehow replicate the biosonar the Titans used to communicate... I know what the hell it is. I helped build a prototype. But I'm not going to angrily cut you off until you can ejaculate the minimum bit of exposition into the scene, because we've got monsters to fight, goddammit. Emma and I destroyed the prototype. After San Francisco, she went home to Boston, spent years developing it. When somebody says they spent years, what amount of time do you think of? Five years have passed since the events of the last Godzilla. If you spent five years in college, do you say, man, I spent years in college? Probably not, unless you're a psycho. Anyway, the movie later suggests that Emma probably spent at most three years on it. Emma always said, no one knew the Olga better than you. It shouldn't even exist. You guys, we're out in the middle of f***ing nowhere in Colorado, so why are we all whispering? When was the last time you spoke to Emma? About three years ago, after San Francisco. Back home to Boston. But when Vivian told you that story about how Emma rebuilt the Orca, you looked like you had no idea that she had gone back to Boston. But you apparently were there with her for two years. It's pretty unbelievable that Vivian knew the story of your separation and Emma's move to Boston, but somehow didn't know that you were with her during some of that stretch. But if you can identify those frequencies, we'll be able to track the Orca and find Emma and Madison. Because, I suppose... The orca is constantly powered up and transmitting frequencies? Codename Mothra escaped, only to cocoon itself later under a nearby waterfall. Hey man, who doesn't like a good 45-foot shower after you woke up from a long nap? Pharmaceuticals, bioweapons. Oh man, they dragged poor Bradley Whitford into this, didn't they? Something bigger, meaner. We don't know that, Rick. Wait for it, Chen. I see we've reached the everyone around the table gets at least one line and make sure to say each other's name portion of the movie. Why would they want just this one when they've got the keys to your entire magic kingdom of horrors back here? Why is he the only one smart enough to figure this out? And surely if he wanted Mothra, he could have already stolen her, right? Do they think that Jonah attacked the place, stole the orca, and allowed Mothra to escape? Emma wouldn't have wanted that, even to save her life. Well, it wouldn't be the first time Emma put all of this before herself, or her family, would it? Jeez, if I wanted this much unnecessary drama related to a monster movie, I'd have read the aftermath of the CinemaSins Kong Skull Island video. Do these titans. Oh, hey there, O'Shea. I couldn't see you through the fog of this movie's negligence. Arizawa has all sites on high alert, so transmitting emergency codes now. You mean all the Monarch sites are on high alert, but they didn't change the emergency codes? They know very little about how Jonah infiltrated the outpost in China, but took no precautions other than to be on high alert. I'm pretty sure the only character description Charles Dance was given was Grimace. <laughs>
This attack starts on the outside of the facility, and the movie will go to zero length to explain why the people on the inside of the facility were unable to protect themselves or sound an alarm. Eyes straight ahead, deep breaths, just like we talked about. Talked about? Talked about? We've seen them the whole time since the landing, and all they said was that they're scared. Did them have a talk before all this shit that covered what to do when surrounded by a bunch of dead scientists in Antarctica? Monster Zero. Oh man, I love that drink. It's even low calorie. You ever tried it mixed with Jägermeister? I pour that shit non-stop when I play my local poker game. Any survivors? No. They tried to launch an emergency beacon, but we cut them off in time. This is why not being able to see Jonah and his soldiers take over this facility is deeply unsatisfying. Instead, we saw Emma and Madison's reactions to the attack and absolutely none of the methodology. The idea that this outpost tried to launch an emergency beacon, but were unable to do so for some reason just sounds like cover your ass bullshit when assholes like us ask how this place wasn't able to simply press a button to let Monarch know what was happening. No, Eleven, your powers won't work here. He's never been this close before. Who's he? Who do you think? Sure, when it isn't necessary at all, say your coworker's name out loud in the middle of a meeting. But when it comes to Godzilla, just assume everyone knows who you're talking about and play the pronoun game. How are they getting all this? Emma isolated Godzilla's bioacoustics. I so wanted to do a bonus round for all the times these assholes said bioacoustics, but I figured that this video would already be around 95 minutes. So instead of that, just accept 95 cents, movie. Open the shields. Let them know we're not a threat. How does Godzilla know that this submersible they're in even has its shields engaged? Does Godzilla know anything about shields? What are you doing, dude? If Godzilla is being drawn by the Orca to Antarctica, what is with this ridiculous scene when he's scaring the hell out of these people in the underwater facility? Why would he even bother swimming by here? <laughs> Just thought I'd swim by and scare the shit out of you. <laughs> we have fun. Dr. Stanton, what's your projection? All pads have him landing in the same place, Antarctica. Okay, so all of Godzilla's track routes show that he's never been to Antarctica. So how does a computer say he's definitely going there based on the available information? Especially since you assholes are in Bermuda. There's so many places he's been according to this map that Antarctica is a giant jump to conclusions. I've been scouring through thousands of years of myths and legends, but it's almost as if people were scared to even write about it. Including screenwriters circa 2019. We lost Godzilla. He dropped off the scan near Venezuela. That's how he moves around so fast, using these underwater tunnels like wormholes. But your computer was certain about Godzilla's path, and it didn't even take into account underwater wormhole tunnels. We're approaching the base. You mean the base in Antarctica? Then why the news about losing Godzilla around Venezuela, which is some 11,000 kilometers behind you? We're taking heavy load! Not heavy enough for me. Even after catching these guys by surprise and putting them in a bottleneck situation, the bad guys, for reasons unclear, allow them to escape. Hey guys, I'm getting an EKG reading. You mean of Godzilla? The guy who apparently uses wormhole tunnels to go places quickly? I'll remind you that you beat him here, so nothing about this entire trip to Antarctica makes sense. Emma! Eddie! Yes, the first thing that you do when walking into an ambush site full of recently murdered bodies is immediately and loudly announce your presence. And yeah, motherfucker's a civilian and all, but he's also supposed to have half a f***ing brain, right? I do not have a shot. Repeat, I do not have a shot. Then f***ing move! You're blocked by a three-inch piece of rebar! What the hell indeed, Foster? You know, Ethan Hunt would shoot her in the shoulder right now to make her drop the detonator, but Godzilla is not that kind of movie. Run. Good of her to give that one second warning. See, she's not so bad. Um, Hail Hydra? Do you need a big effect sequence in your movie, but you are on a budget? Is your monster just drawn on a series of bourbon stained cocktail napkins instead of being properly computer generated? Well, why pay for good CGI when you can buy the brand new service? Introducing Dark. Dark! It'll obfuscate your creature, make your military cardboard cutouts look close to real, and it'll save you a lot more than a buck. That's D A R K Dark. Oh, uh, shit. You see, you just ruined a perfectly tense moment by inserting this asshole's comic relief into it. I guess this is the equivalent of Monster Zero Blue Balls. With all the staring these poor bastards had to do in this movie, I bet the Clear Eyes budget was as big as the monster budget. Oh, sweet, it's Godzilla! Whew, just in time! This is a badass shot that the movie will forget when it comes to the action. I could have watched the entire fight from this perspective. Sure, you could throw in a few edits here and there to get us closer to the action, but maybe just take a breath and let us enjoy the full frame spectacle just f***ing once. Godzilla, King of the Monsters, big fatal flaw, constantly cutting to the humans and their reactions rather than just showing the monster fight. There's some cool fights in this movie, but a great chunk of it occurs off screen to focus on the humans that we clearly don't give a f about. Oh no, not that character. That character was all important when that character plain shit about the monsters and um, brought a real emotional, ah, f it. 
Mark survives all of this. Also, how is Mark sweating this hard outside at night in Antarctica? It's as if she's trying to start a mass awakening. Well, it's just too bad that no one tried to warn you that that was gonna happen. He's right, but he doesn't really have anything to be pissed about. Instead of doing the stupid shit with Mothra where they hoped to find Jonah, they tried to follow Godzilla to Antarctica and did the exact thing they needed to do. They just didn't win. Nothing was up because they didn't follow his advice. They completely abandoned their earlier plans. Godzilla appears to be following the same path as Emma's offspring, heading north over South America to here. We touch down there in 10 minutes. Um, either you just now told everyone where you were going or there's no way you're 10 minutes away from this place near Mexico. Humans have been the dominant species for thousands thousands of years and look what's happened. Overpopulation. Pollution. War. Wait, Emma's got this edited to be a visual aid in this speech? Has she seriously been working on a PowerPoint presentation about the scourge of humanity? The mass extinction we feared has already begun and we are the cause. Antagonist does something really, really f***ed up because humans are a disease cliche. Also, I know Emma's supposed to be insane or some how does she account for the titans that aren't doing anything about the human infection like Kong or Godzilla? Why would the Earth birth Kong on Skull Island of all places? Using the Orca, we will return to a natural order. A forgotten order where we coexisted in balance with the titans. I never thought I'd say this about a brainless monster movie, but this sh is way too wordy. Over the last 60 years, Monarch has prepared bunkers around the world to save and restart civilization. Bunkers have been built to save and restart civilization in a disaster movie cliche. Leave her out of this. Why? You're the one who pulled her into it. Tywin would be so good at cinema sins, man. I'm honestly starting to believe he's really the only person worth rooting for in this movie. I'm sorry. Is this supposed to do something to a purported fire demon? Especially one that just came out of a volcano laughing at the freezing temperatures of lava? Wow, I didn't realize I was going to be disappointed in the last few episodes of Game of Thrones all over again while watching this movie. Rodan and Monster Zero engage! Woohoo! Let's do- I mean- Guys, we know they're gonna survive the crash. That plane contains all the heroes, except for that delightful scamp from Stranger Things. Show the fighting, goddammit! <laughs> this is Barnes' picture when he radios in? I'm not even mad, that's kinda hilarious. But seriously, it's still a sin, because I am a jealous and vengeful god. Thank you for giving us nine more seconds of this fight. You're too kind. You've clearly outdone yourselves. I like how these kinds of movies always have to make the heroes act impulsively so that they can seem like a hero at all costs. Why can't they just tell the guy in charge down here what he's thinking? Oh, god. Deuzilla Ex Machina. He's gone. Awesome, then I'm as sure he's actually as dead as T'Challa when he was pushed over the waterfall with an hour left in Black Panther. If I edited this shot into a Transformers movie, at least 98% of you would not be able to tell the difference. You're a monster. Yeah, but I give Vera Farmiga only about a 41% chance of winning a fight in the King of Monsters Battle Royale. Of course, I did fail statistics, so what do my professors know? Well, I think it has something to do with his goddamn head growing back. Well, I've never seen anything like it. it. Violates everything we know about the natural order. In a stupid movie full of stupid stupid Stupidisms, this may be the stupidest. Growing back stuff after it gets cut off? Lizards, spiders, stone crabs? This character's a f***ing scientist, man. What did they call him? Ghidorah, the one who's many. Kiwi? This is like gonorrhea. Yeah, that sounds exactly like gonorrhea, face. You'd fit in swell at Kappa Sigma. Jokes like that make you a legacy member. Moscow, London, Washington, D.C. Eh, it's not as catchy as the original, but I'll take any version of Huey Lewis's heart of rock and roll that I can get. Their behavior is not random or erratic. If I may, sir. Yeah, let me explain it, Eileen. I'm whiter and maler. Kidola and Godzilla's rivalry was ancient and unique. I'd pay double to see that movie instead of this one. Let's broadcast the Orca from Fenway. It's just a few miles from here. This movie goes further out of its way to set an action finale at Fenway Park than the town. This iPad tells its users, you want to know if it's AM or PM? F you. You want to know the date? Eat it. Like, go find my daughter. How? Where are you going to go? He's the only thing I got left, Sam. <laughs> Wait, Mark's plan is to seriously commandeer a super valuable plane and pilot just for himself during a time of global crisis in the faint hope of accidentally himself into finding Eleven? Holy f the TriStar logo is about to kill Kyle Chandler. In the words of Mark Wahlberg, We've got to do something! Mothra, queen of the monsters. Whoa, whoa, whoa there. Mothra was just born, so ease up a little on the official titles until she hits the prime of her career. You didn't see Nicki Minaj crowned as the queen of rap just after her verse on Kanye's monster dropped. So her and Godzilla, they like, they got a thing going on? The movie seems to think the answer is yes, in a symbiotic kind of way. But if that's the case, why was Mothra in a pupil stage when she was at the monarch outpost? She had to form a cocoon to become the awesome monster she is. So is this actually Mothra's kid? Or is there some weird backwards metamorphosis when Mothra goes into hibernation? So this plan is what you would call a long shot. 
right? Yeah, the plan is to blow up nukes to revive Godzilla, which doesn't seem to be the way nuclear energy actually works, but even if it does, isn't Godzilla an ancient predator who rose millions of years before nuclear energy was created, according to these new movies? They want to bring Godzilla back from the dead. Barnes recites the unfortunate result of a discussion between powerful producers in 1996. Also, you know, if this part of the movie were the build-up to the final battle between Godzilla and the three amigos, it may have been a serviceable creature feature, but this is only the first part of the plan to get everyone together, and so there's going to be a whole lot more rain and staring and punching and CGI and rain and staring and punching. These moments of crisis are also potential moments of fate. God damn it, movie, can we just speak in a normal f***ing voice? It's either whispers or screaming. There are other vocal registers. Dad, shut the shit! Some sort of vortex guy. Let me get this straight. They had no idea where Godzilla went because none of their instruments told them where he was. They assumed Mothra was acting as some sort of Godzilla detector, so they pointed their sub into the water underneath her. But then... The inertial says we're 600 miles from departure. So that leaves the movie to lockbox these assholes into a previously undiscovered vortex that just happens to take them exactly where Godzilla is, 600 miles away from their departure point. I know they're all supposed to be on the same side down here, but also this is the most important instrument in all of existence right now. And they're leaving that unattended? Why is it even in a spot where no one's at? That should be front and center at all times. Hang on, you can just walk the hell out of a super secret monarch survival bunker? It's not even a bell on the door or anything? It's like the whole sky's alive. That's because it is. Okay, it's not as bad as Halle Berry's toad quote from X-Men, but this is up there in the dumbest movie quotes I've ever heard. Jesus. Ah, so that's where he ended up. This is the single greatest disaster in human history. Hang on, guys. Try not to move too quickly. Nice and easy. I think the movie has become sentient and aware of itself, and there's no telling what it'll do now. With the water covering up a city and a random dragon flying around, if I inserted this shot into that time bright and the day after tomorrow merged into one movie, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and the bright after tomorrow. Holy sh this Serizawa send-off takes so f***ing long that I've convinced myself he's not actually gonna die. But the movie would have to have more than half a nut to actually do that. The good news is they'll revive Godzilla with this blast. The bad news is that they unknowingly destroyed the algae that cures cancer, and the documents proving God's existence, and worst of all, they destroyed the lyric sheet to that 30 second song that would revive Godzilla in a snap and kept Ishiro alive. I'm sure glad to see Godzilla back, but what a waste of energy. Nobody move! Godzilla can smell that these people are good. What about Mo, Larry, and Curly over here? Shemp denial. Ominous CGI obfuscating clouds are also obfuscated CGI. Discuss. Damn it, this is like the fifth shot that's ripped off the T-Rex scene from Jurassic Park. And if anything's gonna rip off Jurassic Park, it's Jurassic World. So here's an extra 10 sins, assholes. Okay, so Madison's gonna survive this because she's going to be one step ahead of Monster Zero's attack. But does something seem weird to you about the way this lightning attack is working? Why isn't it slicing through as one to three continuous beams? And why weren't the heads working together like they always have? Instead, it seems like Monster Zero is shooting once, then stopping, then aiming and shooting again, and so on. Deuzilla ex machina capitulum duo. Man, this is gonna add new meaning to hitting a ball over the green monster at Fenway. Alright, time for the climactic battle. Glad I'll finally be able to see- Mother Has he been working out? Are you kidding me? Sarazawa's got that lizard juiced. Juicing? At an MLB stadium? No! That's impossible! I'm saying in about 12 minutes, it's gonna be a bad day to be a Red Sox fan. You mean in 12 minutes, all Red Sox fans are going to get transported to October 25, 1986? Remember that Bobby the Vampire episode called The Zeppo, where Xander went off on his own adventure and all the real was going down with the other characters in the background? That's what this movie feels like. Only that was a clever episode in the context of many episodes, and this is a whole movie. Even though we've seen Godzilla take a muto and breathe his blue nuclear sh down his throat, here he decides that smashing through a building while Ghidorah is stuck to it is the best move. If I had the two of you for parents, I'd run away from home too! Home. There's no reason why Barnes makes this run away from home comment other than to jar their memories that Madison is going to their old house. Barnes has been on this mission from the beginning. Running away from home is a bizarre f***ing thing to say when he knows that she's been kidnapped and sent to places against her will, far away from this home he's speaking of. Pretty lucky this door's unlocked, whether this is still the Russell house or someone else's house. Godzilla's radiation's reaching critical mass! Six minutes until he blows! Well, I've been watching this movie for 109 minutes and trust me, he already blows. Sure was nice of Godzilla and Ghidorah to chill for a while during their epic fight to the death to let the Russells play hide and seek with Maddie in complete silence. Yeah, we see a hand. I'm very much doubting that Mark sees a hand. Oh, he loved her back to life. The impact of Godzilla getting thrown from this high in the air should probably blow all these people away, but it doesn't. It just makes a strong, harmless wind. Osprey's coming in two minutes! The f 
Because the Osprey have been doing this whole time. There's only one Titan fight that's been going on for the last several minutes, and before that, there was a grand total of two. We fix it, get on the Osprey, and draw that thing away from Godzilla. Man, anytime I take my soaking laptop into the shop, and it takes them any more than the 30 seconds it takes for these guys to fix a busted complex piece of machinery that transmits bioacoustics, I am raising f***ing hell. Are you good to go? Yes. How does Mark or really any of the military team know that Emma's good again? The last time they saw her, she was preaching about letting the Titans kill a bunch of fools and cleanse the world. And all she's done since she arrived on the scene has been to yell orders at them and look for Maddie. But all of a sudden, they're perfectly on the same page. Long live the king. <laughs> what? While the movie has been pretty good about that 12 minutes until Godzilla melts down time, as far as the actual movie time is concerned, there is no way what we've actually seen fits into 12 minutes. How the hell is this asshole alive? Mothra stabbed him, and he fell helplessly to the ground like he was out of commission. And then, let's not forget, Godzilla just melted down the entire area that Rodan was lying unconscious in. A meltdown that wiped out Ghidorah just a second ago. This entire credit sequence is one big f***ing trailer for Godzilla vs. Kong, and God damn it, give me a f***ing break before you ram any more Kong Dong down my throat. We'll take it. Oh goody, is the MonsterVerse now going to stitch together Frankenstein and Ghidorah? And we'll get that Franken Ghidorah? Sweet! Can't wait until the Dracula show up. If this gonna be that kind of party, I'm gonna stick my dick in the mashed potato. <laughs> Contact the Argo. Yes, ma'am. Nice dissolve. Big CGI fight coming up. I was looking at recipes for toast. Oh, I'm caught in my own web of lies. God bless you. Clear eyes. Hang on, guys. Why the hell would she want to release them? And why would she team up with Jonah, of all people, to do it? Oh, I'd be sure and ask that bitch before I blow her brains out. A man named Sean Fentress was on that train. He, for all intents and purposes, is now you. 